50,000 people from around the world are racing today. I want to run the New York City Marathon. I think that is such a good idea. Hmm. That's a bad omen. You've done plays and TV, obviously, but this is your first feature. Yeah. What were some of like the most surprising or hardest things that you learned? Uh, honestly, it was a labor of love for everybody. Mm -hmm. Everyone wanted to tell the story with heart and soul and make sure that we were telling it in the right way. So that was really the focus. So, you know, it was an indie film. We had budgetary constraints. We had time constraints. But when things went wrong, and they did, and curveballs happened, it was really an opportunity for a creative solution. And it was all hands on deck. When you, you hear, you know, the premise, it could have very easily gone like sort of fat girl finds herself through fitness. Do you know what I right. mean? Like that yeah. kind of thing. But that's not not what this is. No. When you were writing it, how did you sort of like very consciously try to avoid that? Well, the idea was to take this uh, archetype from comedies, sort of the mm -hmm. fat sidekick, the funny best friend, the hot mess party girl, and start with that icon of that character and slowly deepen her and s have the audience empathize with her, show her pain, show her pathos, while still keeping the thing funny and fun and relatable and entertaining. So the concept of the film was to sort of start there and say, well, why aren't we, why isn't this our hero? Why isn't this an everyman? Why isn't this somebody we can all relate to? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it wasn't so much looking out for going the wrong way. That was the idea from the beginning, is turning this thing the right way. I need to get a teeny bit healthier. We have rates as low as $129 a month. You do know that people can run outside. That is zero. I'm black. I ran today. How the hell you do that? Somebody chasing you or something? You can do it. Yeah, I know. I'm doing it. Oh, sorry, I'm talking to myself. Brittany is your IRL friend, your yes. real life friend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did her story inspire you? Like, what specifically about her story you were like, this is it? You know, okay, so she's the funniest person I've ever met. We were friends in college. And then we lost touch for a little bit in our early 20s. And in our mid 20s, I needed a place to live and she needed a roommate and I moved in. And we really quickly started having conversations, deep conversations about life and happiness and fulfillment and what those things were and how we could define them for ourselves and if they were capable, if we were capable of actually achieving them. And sort of quickly after that, she went for her first run. And I thought, okay, this is a movie. I, I think this is a really interesting character and this is a really interesting journey she's about <laughs> to go on. So I started outlining the film. And then, uh, you know, her life in some ways started to mimic the film. And then I started to b borrow some milestones from her life for the film. And so it was this sort of, uh, I, I got to create a work of fiction. It wasn't her story. It was a different Brittany that I was creating in my head and in my world. But it was born out of my love for her and my respect for her, uh, her journey that was like, exciting and humiliating and painful and hopeful and tragic and funny and and ultimately um, really beautiful. And I have to assume that Brittany's getting like points on the back end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Huge, all yeah. the merchandise, yeah. yeah. She actually, she owns Amazon now. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. What were some of the key differences, I guess, between Brittany's real life story in the movie? All of the characters are made up. There's no Seth in real life, there's no Gretchen in real life, there's no Catherine in real life. Um, so what it shares is stuff that I have in common with Brittany, which is we both deflect vulnerability through humor. Uh, we both find ways to uh, keep things fun and funny. And in times in our life, we both saw ourselves as the funny best friend or the sidekick. And we relegated ourselves to that role. And what this movie is exploring is how um, our Brittany Forgler, who's in the movie, goes through a journey similar to what Brittany O'Neill, my friend, and I did in our lives, which is we decided we want to be the leads in our own story. And that came with changes in behavior, changes in how we looked at ourselves. We lose some friends, we gain some friends along the way, but ultimately coming into our own as adults and saying, I want to I want to be taken seriously. I want to have dignity and self-respect and find my footing in life. If there was an inspirational movie about your life, you know, Paul, Blanks, blanks. Uh, what would it be about and what would it be called? I think today it would be called Paul Tries On a Nice Outfit for the First Time. <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, ever. You're like a sweater. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow, beautiful. <laughs> Paul gets free breakfast. Yeah, breakfast. I'll, I'll watch that all day. My whole life, the world told me I was lazy because the way I looked. Oh, I was trying to oh. turn my life around. Everything's going to be fine. People held doors for me. I'll hold doors for you. This is my last word. You changing your life was never about your weight. Hold it, please. It's about you taking responsibility for yourself.